Wewe mokozi utakasa ye Moto wako tulete Kipa wachako utumwagie Moto wako tulete Tuangalie huko tuliko Utushushie na roho wako Tufikwe sote uwezo wako Moto wako tulete Ulivyo jibu kwa keja Moto wako tulete Tusikilize ewe jehova Moto wako tulete Uteketeze uobu wote Moto wako tulete Tuataka moto tunakuzihi Moto wako tulete Tusiwe tena na uhitaji Moto wako tulete Ili tutende matakatifu Tutiepuwe na upotofu Maisha yawe ya utukufu Moto wako tulete Na tutumike kwa uhodari Moto wako tulete Wadhambi wote wakukubali Moto wako tulete Kumali tuwe sadaka kwa ko Tuatisongeza mingoni pako Na hivi sasa toomba mungu Moto wako tulete Good morning this is uh, Pentecost of Sunday, and uh, I am bringing the message of Pentecost. My name is Kimani Chege, and uh, I love the Lord because he is my Lord and my Savior. To be able to uh, go on with this message, we will read from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, and I will ask my wife, to read the text. Let's listen to the word of God as it comes from the reading that we have been told, the Acts of the Apostles, second chapter, verses 1 to 12. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tanks of fire that separated and came to rest on, on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are, these, are all these men who are, speaking in, uh, who are speaking Galileans. Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Pantheans means Elamanites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. 
Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Levia near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked each other, what does this mean? This is the word of God. Our topic for, uh, uh, the, uh, re from the reading is promise fulfilled. Pentecost is Jesus' promise fulfilled. Pentecost is a Christian period which is, celebrate, uh, which is celebrated after the 49th or 50th day after Easter Sunday, and it commemorates the descending of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ at Jerusalem as recorded in the reading that we have already read. In some churches, it is a festive celebration. Pentecost is also called the festival of weeks or the feast of harvest in Judaism. During the period of Hellenist or Hellenism, and that is called Greek period, Pentecost became a day of renewing the Noahic covenant, which was established between God and all flesh that is upon the earth. At the time of Pentecost, Jesus, uh, the Jews, both in, the, uh, in Israel and from every nation under heaven, and their converts were in Jerusalem. And we think probably they were there as pilgrims. However, after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD, people were gathered in synagogues so that they could be able to worship God in uh, secret because of the problem of the Romans. And when they gathered in the synagogues, which was houses of prayer, they read the book of Ruth and Exodus chapter 19 and chapter 20. In terms of the promise, references to God's promise in the Bible are many, but I want to cite just but a few. In Genesis chapter 12, God made a promise to Abraham that he will make him a great nation. Isaac was born out of extra extraordinary circumstances and from whom the nation of Israel was born. And verse 2 reads, I'll make you into a great nation and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 12, God made a promise to Moses. And this is what he said. I'll be with you. This will serve as the proof that I have sent you. When you have brought the Israelites out of Egypt, you return here to worship God at this very mountain. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, God, through the angel, made a promise to a virgin girl, Mary. And this is what he said. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High 
will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. To come close to the Pentecost, we see uh, what uh, Jesus promised the disciples in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And this is what he said. And now I'll send the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised, but to stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and he fills you with power from heaven. Again, in John chapter 15, verse 26, there is another promise by Jesus. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. In the tradition, in the Christian tradition, this event of Pentecost represents the promise that Christ will baptize and will fill the, his followers with the Holy Spirit, as it is recorded in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. John answered <coughs> them, Oh, I baptize you in, with water, but one more powerful than I will come the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. All to whom these promises were made as connected with the workings of the Holy Spirit needed to believe and then needed to wait expectantly for their fulfillment. <clears throat> the first reference to the Holy Spirit descending is found in Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River, where Jesus was acknowledged as God's Son. As Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son, and I am fully pleased with you. Pentecost Sunday is 50 days after Easter or after resurrection. When the promised Holy Spirit descended to the disciples, assembled in the house in Jerusalem, as we have already read. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind storm in the skies above them, and it filled the house where they were meeting. Then, what looked like frames or tanks of fire appeared and settled on each of them, we mean the 11 disciples, and every one present was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Man has always needed help. In Genesis 2, verse 20, man was given a suitable companion. But from that time on, God became man's vital companion. And this is what he says. I will be with you always. I will be your God, <clears throat> and you will be my people. That's a promise. God made. God gave this promise to Moses, to Joshua, and to the Israelites. And he did to us who read the scripture today. 
Jesus was a vital companion to his disciples, such that when he said he was going to leave them, they would not see him. They were grieved and afraid. But for Jesus to ease their fears, he made this promise. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. In John 16, 23, he says, now is your time to grieve. But I will see you again, and you rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. This is in reference to his death and the resurrection. You will not see him, you will die. They will see him when he resurrects, and therefore they will be filled with the joy because the Holy Spirit then he will come and fill them. What happened at Pentecost in Jerusalem meant the gospel took a new twist. They began speaking in other languages, meaning human language barrier was broken. Began to speak in other languages or in other tongues. So Pentecost became the world stage at which the gospel of Jesus Christ spread, and its rays of light went to all the corners of the world. The result of this, according to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, was that they became witnesses in and from Jerusalem to Samaria and to us, the Gentile world. What Jesus told them, go and make disciples. We are the product of that, and that is the work of the Holy Spirit descended to us. Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 36, we see Peter's sermon. And the Peter's sermon puts in the stage a new messianic age where people who were said to be drunk were drunk with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke about the gospel with fire. And after Peter's preaching, we see them being convicted. And they ask, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter answered them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy, uh, gift of the Holy Spirit is Pentecost coming to them. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, all whom the Lord our God will call. And uh, the result is 3,000 or about 3,000 were added to their number. And there started a new community of believers in Jesus Christ. Chapters 3 to 7 of Acts tells us about the barrier being broken and the disciples speaking with the power of the Holy Spirit. So they spoke about the gospel with new boldness against all hostilities and persecution. And we can, uh, when you read those chapters, you can see what was happening. A new community was being built. Chapter 8 of the same, the first 
language barrier was broken. Philip went to Samaria, and in Samaria, he found also Ethiopian eunuch, and uh, he spoke to him. Therefore, the, uh, the gospel came to Africa. Chapter 9 is about Paul's con uh, conversion. And after conversion, he was charged with gospel mission to the Gentile world, to all nations. Chapter 10, 15, and Galatians 3, 28, we see through the power of the Holy Spirit, a cultural barrier, religious barrier being broken. And this is what it says in Acts 10, 15. Do not call anything unclean that God has made clean. So everybody becomes included in the community of believers. And then Galatians chapter 3, 28, it says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Jesus Christ. Because of the Holy Spirit, everyone is included in the kingdom of God. We wait for the season of Christmas and Easter with great anticipation, with great expectation, because we want to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We want to celebrate the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. But the question is, do we wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit with the same anticipation? Maybe not. They were in the house. But this, we need to be able to do that. But if this question can be answered, yes, open yourself for the feeling of the Holy Spirit. If no, avail yourself for the gift of your Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit to be given to you with no price. And I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, that the only way, the only way there can be a change in our lives is when we allow the Holy Spirit to enter and indwell us to bring a new change. May God bless us as we open ourselves for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Father, we open ourselves for your infilling with the Holy Spirit. Come, O oh Lord, come. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, the God who favored us so much and promised us the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we are not left alone. Fill our hearts with the newness, with the new strength, with the new life. To serve him, to speak for him, to live for him. And may the uh, blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit fill you with all the blessings from the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let your living waters flow over my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens to Thee are reserved.
hold me in your living arms, take me by your side, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sing to the Father. Oh. 